Hello there guys, you're listening to eBird Online and I'm back with another review. Yes, in another race right down to the bottom, we're talking about Big Ed again. And in this episode, we further confirm the fact that Ed's a systematic liar and a narcissistic dipstick. Before we begin, I just want to say thank you to everyone who's subscribed to my channel. I'm racing towards 40,000, so thank you so much for all of your support. And also, my comment section is absolutely great. And I'll be looking at a couple of amusing comments that I have later in the video. Also, you can follow me on Twitter at eBird Online, and don't forget to like the video. It's really important for my analytics. Right, so without further ado, I give you Big Ed. So if this is the first Big Ed video that you're listening to, please watch part one and part two, and I will link them down below, just so you're up to speed. So this is part three. So we pick up with Big Ed today where we left off in part two, marvelling as we always do at what a bloody narcissist he is. And he's still with Liz in his backyard, and as Ed's already told us, he wants to try and steal a kiss today. And steal is the operative word, because it's all with lies and coercion. He tells Liz, I really, really care about you, and I really, really like you, and I don't want to rush anything, and I want to know how you feel about me. And Liz says really simply, I don't know yet, which is unsurprising because it's date number three. But systematic liar Ed tells her, yeah, yeah, I understand. Well, you know, I don't want to rush you, and I don't want to rush anything. Um, Ed, yeah you do. You wanted a kiss on date one. You didn't get it. You wanted to try again on date two. Again, you didn't get it. Here's date three. What do you want? You're introducing her to your mum. You want to get her in the hot tub. Ed, without being too rude, that can only go badly for you. Seriously. And then also he was saying to his mum, I definitely want a kiss. And it's almost if you think you're owed a kiss. But you know this is all too fast. And you know you're rushing her because you're having to say to her, I don't want to rush things. And honestly, some people fib, some people lie, and some people absolutely bullshit. And Ed, I think you know which category you're in. But guys, before I go all the way in on Ed, I would like to say one thing. His backyard game is absolutely fantastic, I gotta tell you. He has a hot tub in the corner, and he also has a gaslight fire pit table. And the eBird, for the very first time, Ed, approves. And he has really nice plants dotted around, I gotta say it looks good, well done Ed. But I just don't know what to make of Ed's lying. Does Ed lie so much that he doesn't know what he's even saying? I got a feeling he does, because he tells her, I know you just got out of a relationship, I don't want to rush, I don't want to worry you, I'm just here. But to production, his mum, and anybody with two ears that'll listen, or even one, he's been saying, I don't want to waste any time, if she's not into me, I just want to bounce, I want to move on. Ed, which is it? And guys, sorry if my voice is really raspy today. I've got full on hay fever. I've just taken a tablet, so we'll see how that goes. Well, in fact, I almost know how that goes. I'll be asleep in half an hour and you'll get this video on Sunday. <laughs> Ed then decides he's gonna pull on her heartstrings. And it's almost when Ed is telling a girl how he feels about her, Ed is in what I believe is a state of centration. And centration is just a state of being in which somebody finds it hard to see a situation that they're in from any other point of view. And it's usually in children of four or below pre-operational stage. And there's a tendency to focus on the self. So any situation or object or relationship, whatever it might be, is looked at only in relation to that person. And so for instance, if you were to say to little Tommy, who's that boy there? Little Tommy might say, that's my brother, Billy. Okay, Tommy, who's Billy's brother? Tommy wouldn't be able to work out that he was Billy's brother because he can only work out this relationship as it relates to him. I am the centre of the universe and everything in it relates only as it relates to me. I am unable to see anything from anybody else's point of view. And guys, I believe that Ed is the walking, talking epitome of this theory. Ed says to Liz, you make me feel safe, you make me feel happy. You make me feel as if there's a reason to get up in the morning. You're everything to me. And a typical Ed, even though he says he cares for her and he loves her, he's only looking at the relationship in relation to him. So he doesn't really think about what might she want from the relationship? What are her wants or her needs or her desires? If he did, he'd be saying, I can be a safe pair of hands for you. I can be a sounding board. I can be somebody to help with your daughter. 
you can rely on me. I can be somebody to give you lots of love. No, he's only talking about what he wants from the relationship and what is relevant to him. Now, I don't think Ed does this on purpose. This is what Ed does with all relationships and in all situations. He thinks about himself only. Remember back to the last tell all that he was on and he was talking to Rose and Tiffany and he said to Rose, I was going to ask you to marry me. I was going to drop my daughter for you. And Tiffany was right there listening and she looked as if she were about to cry. And the whole studio fell into a shocked silence. Ed's need to portray to the world that I really loved Rose, I'm a good guy, I wasn't playing her along for a fool, was such that he didn't even realise that he made himself look terrible, even suggesting that he was prepared to give up the relationship with his daughter. His level of centration is such that he couldn't objectively see, oh, there's another relationship here that I might be ruining. Or there's somebody else here who might hurt as a result of the words that I'm saying now. Guys, he didn't even consider it. And guys, let me know in comments what you think about this theory. Can Ed see things from other people's point of view? Honestly, I think not. And so the whole time that Ed's saying all of this to Liz, she's nodding. And I can virtually see her thinking, what should I be saying at this point? How can I slow his role? How can I put the brakes on this so-called relationship? She's not looking at him as if she really likes him or as if there's a spark there. She's looking at him in a real gamey kind of way. That's just what I take from it. I don't know what you guys think. And the main look on her face that I see is one of worry. And she's right to be worried. She saw the whole of the Rose story. So anyway, as per usual, the conversation's quite awkward. It's quite negative. It's quite a downer, as it always is with Ed, because he's just got his one track mind of getting to the next base as quickly as possible. Just like a four-year-old, Ed's awfully simple and simply awful. Ed, try to remember this. Liz is on a date at your house. So it's in some ways incumbent upon you to try to give her a good time. Not display to her what a turgid and angst-ridden time it is to be with you. Which it always seems to be. But guys, it's due to get worse. Because of course, Ed wants to hullick Liz. And so as Liz was leaving at the door, Ed really awkwardly tried to plant one on her. And this was always going to be difficult, not least because he had to jump up, but because he was trying to plant one on her with no signals and no real lead up to it. It came right out of the blue and of course she recoiled. And she said, no, it's too soon. And Ed said, oh, sorry, it was just um, spontaneous. Another lie, because of course we know he was planning it. And she ran off into the night and got into her car. And Ed went back into the house, and he had a look of dejection on his face. A look which incidentally, he's truly perfected, for he likes to make people feel sorry for him. And Ed speaks to production, and he says, maybe I'm meant to be alone, maybe I'm better off alone. Again, it's all about Ed. And outside production are talking to Liz, and she tells them it's really awkward and he tried to kiss her, and they said, well, maybe you should go back inside and talk to him. <laughs> i.e. maybe it should give us some more cringe TV. And so she said, yeah, yeah, I think that's a good idea. And when the door knocks, Ed jumps up and is very grateful to see her. And Liz comes back inside and sits at the table and he said, I'm sorry. And she said, no, I really wanted to come back in and, and make sure that it wasn't awkward. I was just worried about how you felt. Mm, production have just said to you outside, do you want to go back and talk to him? And you said, yeah. So would you have done that if production didn't tell you to go back in? Guys, who knows? Oh, that's right, the eBird knows. No, no, she wouldn't. And she said, I just want you to be okay. And he says that he is. And when she leaves for the second time that night, Ed tells production afterwards he doesn't want them to be friends. Ed says friends scares him to death. Oh, Ed, please just stop pushing. And I wonder what makes Ed feel so entitled all the time. Well, we get to find out very soon. Because next time we see Ed, he's going out with his big brother to play golf. And on the way there, they're chatting and talking in the car. And Ed expands on his relationship with his brother. And guys, it sounds toxic. And he said his brother was always the good looking one that the girls liked, but Ed always had the personality. And they were always competitive with each other. And they get onto the golf course. And that competitiveness is played out in black and white. Ed's brother tells him, your golf swing's terrible. Now, believe it or not, I know a little bit about golf because my little brother is a professional golfer. And one thing I always hear him talk about is mobility. He has to actually work out 
and keep his whole body in good shape in order to have a great swing. And although Ed's golf swing isn't the best, Ed has a disability, but his brother doesn't seem to take that into account. He just wants to pillory and tell him, you're not doing it right, keep your eye on the ball. So his brother is so competitive with him that he wants to point out he's better at golf than somebody with a disability. Oh Lord, guys, I really do not like this brother. And Ed tells his brother about his relationship with Liz. And his brother said, have you kissed her yet? No. Oh my God, that's effed up. No, it isn't effed up. Stop being so incendiary. You're actually making Ed worse. And Ed said, I don't want to be in the friend zone. I've never gone from the friend zone to a relationship. And I can tell this brother is not giving good advice and is not going to give good advice. He's just there to tell Ed, she's playing you. If you don't get a kiss on the next date, forget about her. What his brother should be saying is, get to know her, get her to think you're funny and that you're nice and that you're safe and that you really like her and then it may happen naturally. His brother should know that Eddie's quirky and he needs time to put work in in order to pull a 28 year old hot girl. And I think his brother's being wholly disingenuous with his whole, you should have kissed her by now. And this is how I see it. Compared to Ed, Liz is almost like a supermodel. So imagine if you're just a normal guy and you get the opportunity to go out with a model or a supermodel. You know that she's gonna take a little bit more work than the girl from next door because she's beautiful. We know this. There's a currency in relationships and whether we want to admit it or not, all guys know that more work is needed with a beautiful woman in the same way that girls know more is needed with a super rich guy or a super good looking guy or a funny guy. But Ed's brother is just making Ed feel bad about this and Ed feel like some kind of loser because he hasn't got to first base. Well, well done, Ed. You're officially not the most dislikable person in your family. And then his brother said, try to kiss her on the next date, otherwise it's all a waste of time. And Ed said, yeah, I don't want to be friends. Next time you see her, just ask her, I'm interested in being more than just friends. Are you interested? And if not, then you're done. That's it. And Ed said, yeah, yeah. And that's where we end things for this week. So what does the eBird make from all of this? Um, brother, you're giving bad advice. No girl likes to be rushed. A guy trying to rush you for a kiss or rush you into bed pretty much says I don't value you that much because I'm not prepared to put in a month's worth of effort or two months worth of effort. If you're not prepared to give it up right now, I'm bouncing. I've got better things to do. Nothing says you're worthless like someone trying to rush you and giving you ultimata. Also, it's this kind of thought process, you must get a kiss, you must get a kiss, that leads people like Ed to not bother waiting till there are signals or until the time is right, but to just jump in and there's no bigger turn off. It then makes things really awkward and it's counterproductive to what you want in the end. And Ed seems to think he's putting all this effort in. Is that the same level of effort that led you to cook a salad when she came over for lunch? It pretty much is. Typical minimum effort from Ed. As per usual, he wants minimum effort, maximum outcome. That's not the way the world works, Ed, and you know it. Girls, do you like guys rushing you along? Also, can you go from friends to lovers? Mr. Ebird, for instance, we were friends for like three or four months before we started seeing each other. But I guess I have to concede the spark was always there. There was always a potential. And I want to hear from guys out there. Have you gone from friend zone to seeing somebody ever? Does there always have to be that spark? So where does Ed go from here? I'm not too sure. Can Ed change from a moral opportunist to decent potential boyfriend material? I don't think he can make that leap. Maybe he can, maybe he can't. Guys, let me know what you think in comments down below. And also let me know what you think about the brother. Do you think his advice was incendiary and counterproductive? I know I certainly do. And so right before I go, I've got a couple of really funny comments that I just want to draw your attention to. And the first comment is from somebody called Lady Lex. And Lady Lex has decided to write an open letter to Big Ed. Lady Lex, how magnanimous of you. And she said, Dear Big Ed, I would like not only to accept, but thank you for your exclusion of women in their thirties. May heaven shine upon you. Sincerely, everybody, 30 plus. <laughs> And guys, this had me in absolute stitches. Brilliant, very, very funny comment. And Billy Joe Maynard says a similar thing. I'm 47 and I'm so glad to be safe from Big Ed. So thank you for those very funny comments. Keep them coming in and I'll get on with part four. 
Thank you guys so much for listening. Please don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you've yet to do so. And I'll see you very soon. Also, smash that like button. You've been listening to eBird Online and I bid you good day.